congenital ruperia syndrome this is our topic for today so we are going to go through introduction clinical features timing of infection investigations and of course management welcome to my channel please like comment and subscribe to show us your support so congenital ruberia syndrome is a condition that occurs in a baby whose mother is infected with rubella virus so it is an infection that inhibits cell division hence it leads to congenital malformations and low birth weight so when born infants born from an infected mother have IgM antibodies shortly after birth or IgG antibodies. Remember, IgM antibodies can't cross the placenta, and when present, they come from the fetus. So we have a cross code trial we use in congenital Obera syndrome. So one being congenital cataracts, two being cardiac defects, most commonly the patent ductus arteriosus, and of course pulmonary stenosis, and lastly sensorineural deafness. And then we also have other early onset manifestations such as hepatosplenomegaly, fetal growth restriction, low birth weight, extra medullary metaposis, papilla, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, hemolytic anemia, petic retropathy, and microthomia. And uh, the following is a picture showing you how uh, extra pulmonary presence which shows a typical characteristic blueberry muffin rash then we also have late onset manifestations which include hearing loss intellectual disability diabetes mellitus thyroid dysfunction progressive panencephalitis so these are some of the let on say manifestations so if you pause this video and go through it you find that it has most of the almost all clinical features which have been, which you have mentioned both in the early onset and the late onset manifestations so what's the timing of infection in congenital bear syndrome so if the infection occurs in the first trimester usually there is a high probability that the fetus you have congenital deformities but if it also occurs in second trimester there will be a lower chance as compared to it occurring in the first trimester and when the infection occurs in third trimester or after 20 weeks in pregnancy birth defects are uncommon so what are some of the investigations we can do in congenital birth syndrome so one can do a serum code or infant's blood for rubella IgM and we can also do rubella virus detection from the nasopharynx, cerebrospinal fluid and urine by PCR then find that management so the best therapy is prevention which we are going to talk about in the next slide then treatment is only supportive so what do you mean by supportive so we have medical management where we treat asymptomatic patients by just providing a vision and hearing screening then for those who are symptomatic we provide care for the eyes and also for uh, those ones who develop respiratory distress we may take them to ICU then surgically we can uh, treat those ones with PDA surgically and the pulmonary artery stenosis also surgically and then if they also complicate with other problems we can also treat them supportively and the infant who develops a congenital bear syndrome should be isolated for the first year of life since they are considered to be most infectious within that period and also advice would be given to our visitors as well and then prevention is where we do our measles rubella vaccine which is a live attenuated vaccine which is used in immunization program and in extended immunization program it is usually given in two doses so dose one is given at nine months and dose two is given at 18 months and uh, we have to follow 
the local protocols for indications, dosage, and contraindications. Then the measles rubella vaccine should be indicated in children in the targeted groups, regardless of their immunization status, and also it is contraindicated in pregnant women and immunosuppressed patients. So this is the last part. So we have to go through the clinical vignette. So we have a scenario which is saying a newborn has bilateral cataracts and microphthalmia, hemorrhagic skin lesions scattered throughout the body, and a harsh systolic murmur head at the left sternal border and radiating to the lung, lung fields. His birth weight is 2.1 kg at 38 weeks gestation. So Shannon is saying, what questions are you going to ask to help you consolidate your diagnosis? Three marks. What is your diagnosis? Then see what is the most common cardiac lesion in this condition? Two marks. Then D. Besides what is obvious in the vignette above, name the third feature to complete the typical so triad. So this patient has bilateral cataracts, microthomia, hemorrhagic skin lesions scattered throughout the body and also they are they have a low birth weight at 2.1 kg so those are some of the risks and some those are some of the features we mentioned for congenital bear syndrome so question a the questions you might ask the mother should be so we can ask for n maternal history of immunization and also if at all the number of weeks of pregnancy when maternal exposure to rubella occurred and also we can ask for medical history of rubella on maternal part and also we can also ask for the evidence of intravitreal growth retardation during pregnancy and also we can also ask the manifestations which are suggestive of congenital bear syndrome in the child when he was born there and then the diagnosis is congenital bear syndrome common cardiac region is the patent ductus atresus as the most common the ND is saying the other so in the question we have been given bilateral cataracts and of course the cardiac defect is com is more like uh, obvious so the third typical feature we might find is the sensorineural deafness thank you